Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Caravan of Garbage, the first for the year. And we thought to ourselves, Mason, we thought to ourselves, this is the thought process that we thought to ourselves. I'm listening. Leading I would up- love to know what my thought process is. <laughs> Leading up to Robert Pattinson, or Robat Battenbat, which is his official The Batman name. That's correct. Get uh, it. Hashtagging. It's already trending, but if you could just keep it trending. Keep it rolling forever, great. yeah. Uh, yeah. Leading up to him portraying The Batman in The Batman, there isn't really a better time uh, in media to cover what many people would consider to be the pinnacle of Batman in film. Early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Fearsome creatures of the night. Oh my goodness. Well, that's exactly right. And of course, the best place to start would be, you know, your Batman Begins. So please leave a like for this video where we're obviously going to be looking at Batman Begins. And bearing in mind, it's it's very improper to take back a like after you've given it. With that being said, fake. We're actually covering um, Twilight. We're, we're watching Twilight, Twilight movie, and maybe all of the Twilight movies. Maybe we don't See know what yet. This one does <laughs> views wise now. You've seen Twilight before. This is the only one that I have seen, and I oh. saw it at the movies in 2008. And I've got a question for you, Mason. Go on. Uh, it's not Batman related. So, of all of, I'm the, in. <laughs> of all of these that kind of, you know, were happening in the era, and there were successes with young adult stuff, mm. but this is certainly, like, one of the most successful. Why did this succeed over, like, Beautiful Creatures or The Host or Red Riding Hood or The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones or Divergence? <laughs> what is it about these movies that do you think endured? First of all, I've heard of this one and none of the other ones. <laughs> sure. So maybe that's it. But I think maybe, based based on my first viewing of this, which was today, yeah. maybe it's because they took a classic monster, a, a, an evil creature from literature, one of the most, uh, and folklore even, you know, yeah. one of the most, you know, famous evil beasts mm. of, of the darkest corners of human, uh, the human psyche and, 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 and society. And they just strip most of it away. Yeah, right. just like, what if he was a cute boy? <laughs> what if he was good. a cute what boy? What if he was a cute boy? See, I think that's definitely part of it because obviously the, the books, you know, were lent into that heavily and they kind of tweaked it a lot. When I say a lot, I mean all of vampire lore. Uh-huh. But I think also, despite what you think of these movies... Um, you don't know what I think of these movies <laughs> yet. <laughs> well, I'm just talking in general what oh, people sure. think of them. I think it's cast very well. And I think yeah. that has proven to be true mm. in the decade plus... Since we this got, came we out. got Kristen Stewart, we yep. got Rob Atbat and Bat, yep. Anna Kendrick is in this. That's right. Other people, the guy who's probably going to be a werewolf later. I'm pretty sure he's a werewolf guy. He's a werewolf. Does he get later. huge later? He doesn't seem that huge. In yeah, this. he gets big. He gets yeah, big in between movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're yeah, coming yeah. back next week, mm. we'll talk about it next week. Uh, so yeah, five thousand people read for the role of Edward Batten Bat. He had an, uh, an intellectual approach. That was combined with the, I don't give a fuck about this, but I'm going to make it sing. That was from Kristen Stewart. And she was like, ugh, same. So I feel, I feel like that kind of sums up their chemistry. Now, was there, are those quotes from like the press tour? Or are they from years later? I think it was like from years later. Okay, right. That wasn't, they were, they were being interviewed by, you know, MTV or something like that. No, nothing well, like what that. What is fascinating about this movie is, I was watching it for the first time today. And yep. for the first like, 10 minutes, I'm like, hey, this isn't so bad. This is like this sort of coming of age story. Like this girl goes to this backwater town. Yep. She's she's meeting all these these you know the the the, the she's nerds. Got, she's going to the she's going to this new high school. She's meeting all the nerds, and I'm like, this is all this is all kind of fun. Yeah. This is all kind of you know I'm I'm liking their their ke- they're all their chemistry all together. I think they 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 make a good kind of ensemble cast. They've all got different haircuts. And then Edward Cullen shows up. <laughs> And then Kristen Stewart and Robert Battenbat, zero chemistry. You think so? He's going out of his way to be unlikable, this guy. <laughs> my, my, my first note here is, why is Edward Cullen so weird? He's had a hundred years to learn how to not be weird. You know what I think it is? You know what I think you're missing here? Just just to be clear also, this ground I'm, I'm guessing is very well worn. We are probably not going to oh, come yeah. up with any incredible right. insights here. No. But So this, this vampire family. Yep. What do you think of the outfits for one? That's my first point. <laughs> like the, the, their their plan is yeah. that they want to they want to blend in a human society. They don't want to stand out. One of the, and and one of the things is because they obviously don't age because that's the one thing that's the one vampire thing that remains yeah. in these movies. They move to a new town 
every few years. Or just go back to the same town. They enroll their, their vampire brethren, the ones that look most like children, into school, and they yep. have to do school again. But they don't go to any effort to look like children. No. You know what I mean? They're wearing, like, weird avant-garde outfits. <laughs> well, you know what I think it is? I think, yes. I think what, what you're missing is maybe a lot of that stuff was cool in 2008 for one, and that's what they were oh, going they're like, for. Oh, they're like... The, but, they're, but that's the thing. They don't dress like little, awful, greasy children. <laughs> <laughs> from that era and just like band t-shirts and flannel shirts or whatever. They're all wearing weird technical outfits. Yeah, and it is very Just strange. weird asymmetrical cardigans <laughs> and all kinds of weird fashion stuff. But but back to Edward Cullen. Yeah. He's had a hundred years to learn not to be weird, but his whole deal is he's weird. Yeah. Have you noticed? Yeah, it's like, a deal. He's so fully unprepared for any and all questions anyone has for him. <laughs> They're like, would you like a drink? And he's like, I don't drink... Water. <laughs> That's very specific. Yeah. <laughs> I think that comes down to because of, you know, and I love the way they kind of play off each other in terms of they both act like they find the other one like the worst smelling person they've ever sat across from. Right. Like that's the vibe, yeah. which I thoroughly enjoy. Well, and I think obviously, the, you know. Like he's thrown by her is, what sure, was, is yeah, my yeah. point. Because he can't read her mind. Is that that's yeah. the deal, right? Oh, that's another thing that vampire power that some of them have. Sure. Some vampires can read minds. Some vampires, more of a vibe they get. Yeah. You know? And yeah, that guy's got a cool vibe. Mm. I'm going to eat him. Vibe fire. Is that anything? No. Cut that out, Ben. <laughs> Got it out. But, but but I think, you know, part of this is based, you know, obviously this is more a YA romance than it is a vampire film, sure. obviously. And, and so they put in, like, YA romance tropes into it. But what that leads to is just, the, you know, that really outdated idea of, like, well, if a boy's really mean and rude to you, it means he likes you. Yeah, no, I hate all of that. Settle down. But, this, but for this, it's him literally being like, ugh, <laughs> ugh. Repulsive. Your, your smell makes me sick. <laughs> And that's how I know I love you. Is it? <laughs> Settle down. That being uh, said, I like his little Volvo hatchback that he drives around. Oh, yeah. He's looking good, isn't he? One of the coolest cars of 2008. Yeah. We should also talk about her before I get back to... Uh, I want to talk about the, the vampire law specifically. That okay, sure. On here. Oh, that's where we're going to shine, I think. Well, I think much we'll... like a sparkly vampire. That's where we're going <laughs> to shine. Very much so. Nitpicking vampire <laughs> law. So there was a bunch of earlier scripts that uh, director Catherine Hardwick threw out. Okay. They basically didn't relate to the book at all. And this, as far as I can tell, adheres very closely to that novel. The original script had had Bella on jet skis being chased by the FBI at one point. Excuse me? Things like that. But, you know, I think, you know, she's uncoordinated and... <laughs> That's her number one character trait. She slips over sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's... How do you think they did the slip on the ice thing? Maybe she slips on the ice. Then her dad's like, "Don't slip on the ice." Get up, idiot! Yeah. <laughs> do you think? I'm just saying. Do you think it was? Do you think it was a a, a fake ground? Do you think it was yeah. a padded bus? How I, do you think they did it? I think she's a great actor. Probably did it with acting. You're right. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, so I think the idea is though they make her uncoordinated and relatable, and then later, presumably, she gets vampire powers, and they're like, "She's so coordinated. She's so good at baseball now, or, or whatever, etc." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Vampires famously love old timey <laughs> baseball. Yeah, they would. You know, yeah. it's it's America's national pastime. I was going to say around this era, I remember there being a critical backlash against Muse, and I don't remember why. <laughs> oh, no. Now I think I know. Now you got it. Uh, so okay, well, now's a good time to talk about vampire law, Mason. Please. Um, I don't actually have a problem with any kind of reinterpretation of what it means to be a Dracula. They change a bunch of stuff here, no fangs, they don't sleep, uh, they sparkle. That's all fine to me because it gets reinterpreted all the time. I think people are just mostly mad about the sparkling thing. But I like the idea that like all the stuff that he's doing and that mm -hmm. they're all are doing is like a camouflage and it's also... A bad camouflage. A bad camouflage, but it's also supposed to be inviting. So you see this and you're like, this is a beautiful person. I'm going to get up close and give him a kiss. And then he's like, I'm going to bite you. <laughs> I'll bit you. With my regular teeth. <laughs> yeah. Cop this. Yeah. Ah, this takes forever. <laughs> ah, I wish we did have fangs. Do they not have fangs? No, they just have poisoned bites. I mean, the sparkling thing is strange because he's like, you need to see, you need to see what I look like. And he, you know, runs her up to the top of the mountain. Like a Muppet. Like a Muppet. <laughs> like, like Miss Piggy with Kermit the Frog on her back. <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, and he's like, yeah, you need to see this. And he's like, and he's sparkling and he's beautiful. And he's like, look at me. This is who I am. I'm hideous. And she's like, oh no, that's actually very pretty. 
Mm. You're very pretty. Oh no, no one's seen this before. We should have <laughs> we should have checked with more humans. You might want to know more about how they eat as well, if you don't mind. Sure. So in Midnight Sun, which do they is, have suckers on their fingers? They don't have any of that, mate. Oh. They don't have any of that. You're thinking yeah. of the creature of the Black Lagoon. I am thinking the creature, creature who's in the Black Lagoon. Mm. The creature who owns the Black Lagoon. The landlord of the Black <laughs> Lagoon. <laughs> Red, where's my Red? He keeps bumping it up. It's yeah. not cool the way he operates, quite frankly. No, I won't fix all the the Black Goo. <laughs> it's part of the lagoon. It's in the, it was in the lease. <laughs> when you signed it. So there's a book on Midnight Sun, which is basically Twilight, but it's from Edward's perspective. Is right? this uh, authorised? Yeah, same okay. authorised. Came out a couple of years ago. So apparently there's a moment in that where he has a bite of pizza and he thought to himself, oh, I'll, I'll need to cough this up later. Because so it he, had pineapple on it. Yeah, so it... <laughs> I like pineapple pizza. Mostly. No, James. This is how we. This is how we increase the comments. <laughs> okay. The comments and the dislikes. Oh, okay, cool, cool. The big debate. The big, the big pineapple on pizza. Well, debate. I like pineapple on pizza. Wow. Leave a like if you like pineapple on pizza for me, and also leave a like if you don't like pineapple on pizza for Mason. Perfect. And then we'll know. Yep. We'll tally them up at the end. So yeah, they can eat. It's unpleasant, and then they have to vomit later. I'd rather be a human if you ask bloody ass, mate. I agree, Mason. Mm-hmm. What you don't want to be a beautiful, sparkling man? No. <laughs> I'm an already am, so that's. I guess I've hit the genetic lottery. Yeah, that's so. a good point. Okay, so the age thing, though. Oh yeah. So they move around. They have a col- they have a connection to the local tribe. Oh, what could it be? Oh, who knows? Um, <laughs> just why are they like? I'm 17. Just say you're 18. Yeah. Any of these people. Or 20, 22, yeah. 25. That's, they all look about that. Any of these people could pass for 36. Look at my technical jacket. <laughs> yeah. Look how technical it is. But you know what I mean? With a haircut and a mustache on all of them, mm. any of them could be like 35 to 40. I mean, Edward Cullen's dad looks like the same age as, as Edward Cullen and he's a doctor or something. He's a doctor or something. It's just weird that they're like, we'll start school at 16 and, and go through again. It's weird. Yeah. Don't do it. Yeah. I don't like it. Just dress je, dresses as chimney sweep. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're a family of chimney sweeps. Exactly. You're here to sweep the chimneys. Settle down. So. But also, it is weird, isn't it? Yeah. You ever, you ever tried to talk to a teenager? No. You've got nothing to say. I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Now imagine you're 100. <laughs> You want to talk to a teenager? I don't want to do that. You don't want to do it. But, but this that, guy's like, hmm. Okay, it's a, weird. It is, is weird. What here's saying. the thing. Here's how, here's how maybe you could justify it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just a clarify. Here we go. Here how we go. You could justify it. Not me. I would never. Okay, sure. He can't read her mind. See, this is the movie that should have required that scene from Transformers. You know, the one with the card? <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. So he can't read her mind. Mm-hmm. So to him, that's interesting. Oh. But when you crack that mind, nothing in it's there. a 17-year-old. Right. And what are you doing? You're 120 years old or yeah. whatever. Yeah, strange. So the, the action in this is uh, a lot of it is done practically. It's a lot of motion blur, that is for sure. I've written here, like our favourite scene has always been, because this is the scene, the only scene that I know you've seen mm-hmm. where they run up the mountain. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of that. Yeah. Fun, funny stuff. There is a moment where the character rolls, Rosalie... Uh, angrily smashes a salad bowl. I got a Ooh, genuine laugh out of that. I thought that was fun. That's, yeah. Good bit of slapstick there. That's great. I mm-hmm. think that was intentionally funny, wasn't it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but the villains. Yes. So his name's James. Um, sure. He's, he's that dude from the OC or whatever. He's been around. He's been. Oh, in- is, he the, he's, is he the welcome to the OC bitch guy? Welcome to the OC bitch. He might be a different guy. guy. Oh, mate, no, well, I think he's a different guy. He might be a different guy. guy. He's anyway, a different he's guy. No, 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 no. I, I, I have a, a very clear image in my mind of the welcome to the OC bitch guy, and it's a different guy now. He gets a beat on Balor, and he's like, ooh, I got a ponytail. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat this girl. It's yeah, gonna be, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm loving this. And so their plan is to take her, take Balor back to her dad's house and burn him so badly that he'll probably never recover, like emotionally, because she's just like, you suck and I oh, want to move yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and you know, if I don't get out now, then I'm just going to be stuck here like mum. What you say? Oh, that you only meant when- But then kill the vampire anyway? Yeah. So maybe just kill him. Maybe. And don't do that whole thing where you go home and you've, you like emotionally scar your dad who's just trying to do his best and he's worried about you and yeah. your boyfriend is a is a weird sparkly creep. Maybe just put uh, maybe just put Bella in like a car for yep. half an hour. Just whiz around the town for a bit. Yep. Kill the vampire. Kill the vampire. Get out of the car. So they have a, they have a, they have a punch up in a, in a, in a ballet theater and there's Ooh, mirrors. rent a helicopter. Yeah, that's have good. Have a fun have a fun little fun little uh, helicopter tour of Forks, Washington. Would you go near any of the tall trays? No, I'd go above the tall trees. That's right. Yeah, 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 way above. Yeah, yeah. Like helicopter height. Like helicopter height. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they have a punch up in the whatever and, you know, they're kicking each other. 
And then there's a <laughs> I think it was fascin- it's a fascinating choice, James, to set the big action finale in a room full of mirrors, but not utilize the trope that vampires don't appear in mirrors. Oh my god, I didn't even think of that. There's a couple of shots though, yeah. where like one or both of them don't appear in oh, a mirror. Yeah. And I I think maybe So it's optional for them? I think I think maybe I think there's a setting. Okay. There's a setting in their OS. You couldn't go to school if you're a vampire and you didn't appear in a reflection. Right. It's just not it just wouldn't fly. Yeah. yeah. But I'm thinking maybe on the day they're like, do vampires show up in mirrors? Dunno. Let's film <laughs> some stuff. And we'll decide yeah. later, and they just never did. I find it fascinating that they did a room full of mirrors and there wasn't a moment where they didn't know which one it was and they were smashing mirrors looking for it. I'm surprised they didn't do a bloody room full of mirrors. It wasn't filled with bloody... Bruce Lee was in the room full of mirrors and the guy with the claw. You're surprised that Bruce Lee wasn't in I'm this? I'm surprised they didn't just do the end of Enter the Dragon, <laughs> yes. That's what I'm surprised by. I'm surprised by... A lot of weird stuff. <laughs> what I liked is when, uh, so Edward Cullen finally wins the fight. And he gets there first because he's the fastest. I'm like, cool, you established that. That's good. That's good work. Mm. And so, you know, Edward Cullen's about to kill this guy. And his father's like, remember who you are. Don't do this. Don't kill him. And then he lets go. And then he's like, right, your brothers and sisters are going to tear this guy's head off. <laughs> sure, and yeah. pull off his arms and legs and burn his body. Okay. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. Remember who you are. He's the prettiest guy. Yeah, he is the prettiest. Shouldn't sully his pretty hands. <laughs> yeah. His perfectly manicured hands. Yeah, and he, and he bites her and whatever. And he, he, he's, he, thank God he's, he's got the emo- the, the He can stop biting. Anyway, because um, he eats... Do you think this video will make any sense if, if the viewer hasn't watched Twilight? Or? It's a great question. Isn't it, though? Leave a comment below. Yeah. Leave a like if this makes sense or doesn't. Let us know what you think the plot of Twilight <laughs> is based on what we've said here. <laughs> See if you can piece it together. <laughs> I, I think my favourite callback in this Like movie, the foggiest jigsaw puzzle in the world. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. I think my favourite callback, though, in this movie mm-hmm. is that Bella is a character that's considered so clumsy that her family believed that she rolled down a set of stairs and out a window <laughs> because <laughs> that's, the, that's the excuse that she ends up in the hospital. Yeah. I love that. Just yeah. like, yeah, that's probably what happened, I reckon. You, you left with your boyfriend we've just met and then, and then you came back later with a series of broken legs and you got defenestrated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're not suspicious of him at all. Good He's and normal. Got a, yeah. <laughs> and now, yeah, now he should definitely force you to go to the prom <laughs> against your will. <laughs> With a big boot on. That's not going to affect your popularity at school. Why are they outside where the nice part of the prom is mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and no one else is? That, but did that, was that like established that that was the private Edward Bella part of the prom? <laughs> Don't know, James. I'm just confused because inside a mm. like regular school hall, outside like a wedding. Mm. And then she's like, bite me. I want to be a vampire. And he's like, nah, let's just do kisses. And I'm like, all right, good stuff. Anyways, it's time for Twi Rivia. What do you think? No, I like that a lot. It's trivia. Yeah, yeah, nice. Twilight trivia. We can also reuse that if we do a Star Wars thing, like Twilight trivia. That's very good. Too. Yeah, we'll save that up. Put that in the put that in the put I a pin in that. We don't do Star Wars here, though, do we? Not really, no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the book was originally named Forks before it was published. <laughs> the publisher insisted that Stephanie Meyer could find part of the Knives Out trilogy. <laughs> could find another name for it, and the word Twilight was chosen. Henry Cavill was the first choice for Edward Cullen oh. when he was 25 at the time of shooting. Lily Collins was considered for Bella. Phil Collins' daughter? That's right. She got her own. She was Mortal Instruments. Look at these bones or whatever. She was in one of them. I the, can't the, remember which the one. The City one? The Moving City no, one? No, that was <laughs> Mortal That's City Mortal Engines. Engines of Instruments. Yes. <laughs> um, Emily Browning, uh, Australia's own, was yeah. the first choice but turned it down. Tom Welling was wanted for Emmett Cullen. Uh, so it, would have, it could have been Cavill Welling. Whoa, double Superman. Get Routh and he can be a teenager, I don't know. Um, <laughs> sure. so Dig up George Reeves, whatever, we don't care anymore. <laughs> yeah. So do you remember that bit where he caught the apple like the book? He was holding the apple because the cover of Twilight's holding an oh. apple. It's forbidden fruit in Garden of Eden, maybe it's a metaphor. Oh. Yeah, anyways. Do you think people stood up and applauded in the cinema Definitely. when that happened? I just remember the baseball scene. That's yeah, all I anyways, it took 13 takes to catch this one oh, apple and get it that's right. That's like when uh, Toby Maguire had to catch all that stuff on exactly. the Exactly. But I say, I say weak because he caught a full tray full of food yeah. and he did it with a smile on his face. That's true. And I didn't see a goddamn smile in this movie. Yeah. Uh, speaking of but food. But I mean, from another perspective, um, the Twilight crew probably hates uh, Robert Pattinson less than the <laughs> Spider-Man crew hates Toby Maguire. That so. is almost certainly true. Uh, speaking of food. 
Uh, the bite that Edward Cullen uh, takes out of James's neck mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. made of ham and cheese. Ham and cheese? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like a delicious James toasty. And this one, this is fascinating. This is direct from uh, IMDB trivia. It's hot. It's so piping hot. I brought it over. My computer is literally sizzling. With yeah, this. you got to get this trivia out <laughs> before your computer melts down. Uh, in the classroom scene where Edward and Bella are seated and share a desk, Edward is on the left and Bella is on the right. In the novel, Bella sits on the left and Edward sits on the right. Whoa. My computer's just shut down because yeah. it was too hot. Too hot to handle. Oh, wait, it's back up. We can talk box office. Oh, really? Because these make a fascinatingly large amount of money. This one cost $37 million to make. It made 407 and was the most purchased DVD of 2009. Whoa. Yeah. Impressive. Now, as mentioned, I honestly don't know at time of recording this what we are going to do <laughs> next. Will we come back and do the Twilight Saga New Moon 2009? Will we trick you again and Maybe. say we're doing Batman? Will we just do Batman? <laughs> I haven't decided how long I want to take this joke yet. There's apparently four more movies you were saying in this. In this, if we just do the Batman, there's there's only three of those. Exactly. Anyways, if you do have any suggestions for Caravan of Garbage, please leave it below. And if you want to know what's going on here, you can actually see these early. If you go over and sign up at BigSandwich.co where there's early videos, bonus podcasts, movie commentaries. That's right. Uh, we recently did, uh, in honour of the Batman, we did Nicolas Cage's Ghost Rider 2007. Hell yeah. And there's a bunch of other stuff there, including our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. We're back there, by the way. That podcast has kicked off again for Hell the yeah. year. Uh, thanks to Ben and Lawrence for editing this video and coming back for another year. And we'll see you guys in the next thing. Grab that jam, you guys. We'll see you real soon. Twilight. What a movie. What a series, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn because maybe I'll be like, this is a this is a hilarious thrill ride, four more movies, but yeah. maybe we get through like two more movies and I'm like, I hate this now. you got to see the baby though, right? You, you're telling me there's a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you got to see that baby. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.